In this video, we're going to get started with Fusion 360 PCB design. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and today I want to get started learning about PCB design in Fusion 360. Now, PCB design is something that is pretty much reserved for electrical engineers, people that are in this field. However, in Fusion 360, it now brings this functionality to the hobbyist. There are many other PCB design software out there, such as KiCad uh, or even Advanced Circuits has their own free PCB design software. But if you are a hobbyist, if you're working in Fusion 360 and you are designing your own parts, it can be extremely handy to be able to create your own circuit boards. They can be pretty reasonable to purchase through different companies like Advanced Circuits or DigiKey or many other suppliers. So right now I wanna take a quick look at how we get into the electronics design. I wanna do a quick overview of the library and in future videos, we're gonna begin talking about creating our own components and designing our own circuits. I'm going to assume a basic level of knowledge with Fusion 360, as this is going to be focusing on circuit design and not design in Fusion 360. But I wanna make sure that we understand that we have a new project set up and there's a subfolder for me called PCB series. This is where I'm gonna be placing all of the stuff that I create. Also note that I've created another subfolder called library. We're gonna be making our own components. So we're gonna have our schematic symbols, we're gonna have a layout that can be used on a PCB, as well as 3D components. So I'm gonna make sure that I place all that in the same project. It doesn't have to be here, but it's gonna simplify our process. So to get started, in order to create a new electronics design, we have to go to our file dropdown and select new electronics design. This is gonna bring us into a new untitled document. And so far, nothing really happens. You'll notice that on the left-hand side, we've got this common tab, which allows us to create a new schematic, reference to a schematic document, create a new PCB, or reference to an existing PCB document. Now there, again, are many different ways that we can go about creating these documents, but we're gonna take a basic look. So in order to create something brand new, we're going to use the new schematic. Everything should start at the schematic level. This is going to be the blueprint of what you want your circuit to do. This can contain multiple levels of sheets. We can have links between multiple sheets if you've got a really complex design, but that's quite a bit farther than we're going. We're gonna take a basic look. So from here, we're gonna be creating a basic design, and this is gonna include us adding parts to it, we're going to be routing the nets. The nets are going to connect the different pieces of the symbols that we place. And then we're gonna ultimately push that into a circuit board. But the thing or the topic that we wanna talk about today is really the library. Now the library is where all of this data is coming from. Now the library is pretty extensive, but sometimes there are things missing. So that's why we're gonna cover creating our own components. The first thing that I wanna do is open the library manager. When we have this open, the first thing it's gonna do is fetching the libraries that are used in this design. You'll notice that we have three tabs, in design, in use, and available. Now, oftentimes, if you find a tutorial or a reference, somebody is likely already downloaded or included other libraries that might not be in use for you. So if you ever are following along with somebody, and for example, I have the Adafruit, as well as SparkFun libraries inside of my designs, you'll notice that Adafruit is listed, but SparkFun is not. So if I reference that, all you need to do is go to the available section. You can search for it by name. So for example, if I wanna look for some SparkFun libraries, I can go in and select SparkFun boards. Now from here, I can select use, and it's gonna take it from my available section and put it to in use. Now, if I look through here, you can see that I have SparkFun boards. This is great because it allows me to include these libraries that have already been populated by a lot of these companies. For example, SparkFun has a lot of different libraries which are extremely helpful. So if you're a hobbyist, you're working with Raspberry Pi or Metro boards, or you're using Arduino stuff, 
a lot of that is already going to be in here. So it's important to take a look, and if you're designing a board that's going to use some of these off-the-shelf components, well, go ahead and make sure that you grab an accurate representation of those components. So I'm going to close the library, and we're going to take a quick look at what that actually means. We're not starting a real circuit board yet, but I'm going to go to Add Part so you can get an understanding of what's inside of these libraries. So the SparkFun boards that we just added. When we expand it, notice that we have Arduino Mega R3 Full. So when we look at this, it has the symbol. This is for our schematic, which has all the available pins. And then we have on the right-hand side a 2D layout that can be placed on a PCB. This has all of the vias or the plated holes. And typically when you're dealing with Arduino, for example, if you've got an R3, when you're dealing with this, what you typically see is you've got these shields. The shields will use these header pins and they'll sort of stack together. That's the functionality that's designed into these different types of boards. So if you're building something that is gonna make use of an Arduino Uno, you see that we've got um, other things in here. There are shields. Oftentimes you'll find proto boards that match that. You see that we have a, a Qduino Mini. We've got light sensors. There's all sorts of different things inside of here. We have an SDMMC card. So this is, again, great information. And a lot of these will be directly available from the supplier. So you can see there's a part number here. So if you want to buy any of these components, Here's TNC 3.1. So again, if you need this layout and you buy these components directly from SparkFun or Adafruit, it's great to have these references that you can just drag and drop into your designs. Now, once again, this is not the start of a design. I'm just simply showing you around. So I'm gonna stick an Arduino Uno Rev3 and I'm gonna place it and I'm gonna say, okay. Now, once we place it in here, we have, again, all the available pins. We've got the analog and digital input and output. We've got voltage in, 5 volt and 3.3 out. We've got the reference for analog grounds and so on. So all this information is here so that we can connect the pins. When we move this to a circuit board, we'll use the switch to PCB document. We'll click on that and it's gonna start building the board. At this point, we haven't actually told it how big the board is or what we're doing, so it simply makes a generic size, and it places all of these symbols that we created, it places all of that stuff off to the side of the board so that we can drag it on and place it. So if we were creating our own Arduino shield, by dragging this onto the board, it's automatically created those holes for us, and now we have all of these vias, all these pin locations, that we can use to solder on our jumpers, our headers, whatever we need. So once again, that's the basic process. And to get started, I felt it was important that we took a quick look at one, creating a brand new document, making sure that we understand how to get into the electronics. Two, I wanted to make sure that we understood the library and make sure that we have access to all of the available libraries. Because once again, we're gonna be creating our own components. We're gonna be talking about that process in depth. But make sure that whenever you get started, before you begin creating any components, just check what's available. You might be surprised to find there is a lot in here already from suppliers, from vendors like SparkFun and Adafruit. And just make sure that you check to see what you have available before you go ahead and make any of that. And then I also wanted to make sure we understood the process of going from the schematic to the 2D board layout. There is another process where we can go into the 3D PCB, but I'm gonna save that for a later video. So hopefully this basic introduction was helpful. And if you enjoyed it, please stick around. We're gonna get into the details of creating our own symbols, creating our own pads and layouts and 3D components. We're gonna use some manufacturer supplied 3D CAD data and step or IGES format. We're gonna learn how to make the layout, the pads or the vias. We're going to make sure that we can understand how to create these 2D and 3D components. From there, we'll do a basic circuit board layout. What will include uh, inputs such as power and ground. And we'll create a basic circuit that might just have some resistors and LEDs on it to make sure we understand the process. Anytime you play around with this stuff, feel free to save it. It's going to go into your project location. For our purposes, I'm not gonna save anything that we've done here. I'm simply gonna close this so we can start fresh on a brand new document. 
Once again, thanks for watching and hopefully you'll join me in the next video where we begin to create our new projects and our new libraries.